to. You should spend about 20 minutes on questions 14 to 26, which are based on reading passages to below. Back to the future of skyscraper design. Answers to the problem of excessive electricity used by skyscrapers and large public buildings can be found in indigenous but forgotten architectural designs of the 19th and early 20th centuries. A. The recovery of natural environment in architecture by Professor Alan Short is the culmination of 30 years of research and award winning clean building design by Short and colleagues in architecture, engineering, applied maths and um, earth sciences at the University of Cambridge. The crisis in building design is already here, said Short. Uh, policy makers think uh, you can solve energy and the building problems with gadgets. You can't. As the global temperatures continue to rise, uh, we are going to continue to squander more and more energy on keeping our buildings mechanically cool until we have run out of capacity. Short is a calling for a sweeping reinvention of how skyscrapers and uh, major public buildings are designed and to end the reliance on sealed buildings uh, which exist solely via the life support system of vast air conditioning units. Instead, he shows that it is entirely possible to accommodate natural ventilation and cooling in larger buildings by looking into the past before the widespread introduction of air conditioning systems which were relentlessly and aggressively marketed by their inventors. Short points out that to make a most contemporary buildings habitable, and they have to be sealed and air-conditioned and the energy use and carbon emissions. This generates is a spectacular and largely unnecessary a buildings in the past account for 40 to 50 percent of electricity usage uh, generating substantial carbon emissions and the rest of the world is catching up at a frightening rate short regards glass steel and air-conditioned skyscrapers as symbols of status rather than practical ways of meeting our requirements. Short's book highlights a developing and sophisticated art of science of ventilating buildings through the 19th and earlier 20th centuries, including the design of ingenu ingeniously ventilated hospitals. Of particular interest were those built to the designs of John Shaw Bill Billings, uh, including the first John Hopkins Hospital in the U.S. city of Baltimore, 1873 to 1889. We spent three years digitally modeling Billings' uh, final design, says Short. Uh, we put pathogens in the air streams modeled for someone with tuberculosis TB uh, coughing in the wards and uh, we found the ventilation systems in the room would have kept the patients safe from harm. 
we discovered that 19th century hospital wards could generate up to 24 air changes an hour and that is similar to the performance of a modern day computer controlled operating theater we believe uh, you could build wards based on uh, these principles now single rooms are not appropriate for all patients communal wards appropriate for certain patients older people with dementia for example would work just as well in uh, today's hospitals at a fraction of the energy cost professor short contends the mindset and skill sets behind these designers uh, have been completely lost lamenting the disappearance of excerpt expertly designed theaters opera houses and other buildings where up to half the volume of the building was given over to ensuring everyone got fresh air much of the ingenuity present in 19th century hospital and building design was driven by a panic to public clamoring for buildings that could protect against what was thought to be the lethal threat of miasmas a uh, toxic air that spread diseases disease miasmas were feared as the principal agents of disease and epidemics for centuries and was used to explain the spread of infection from the middle ages right through to the cholera outbreaks in london and paris during the 1850s foul air rather than germs were believed to be the main driver of hospital fever leading to disease and the frequent death the prosperous steered clear of hospitals while miasma and theory was um, has been a long since disproved uh, short has for the last 30 years advocated a return to some of the building design principles um, produced in its wake today um huge amounts of a building so space and construction costs are given over to air conditioning but i have designed and built a series of buildings over the past three decades which have tried to prevent some of these ideas and then measure what happens to go forward into a new low energy low carbon future uh, we uh, would be well advised to look back at design before our high energy high carbon present appeared what is surprising is that is what a rich legacy uh, we have abandoned Successful examples of short approach include the Quebec's building cat and the Montfort University in Leicester containing as many as many as 2000 staff and students the entire building is naturally ventilated um, passively uh, cooled and naturally lit including the two largest auditorium each seating more than 150 people the amount of the building uses a fraction of the electricity of comparable buildings in the UK short contends that the glass skyscrapers in London and around the world will become a liability over the next 20 or 30 years if climate modeling predictions and energy price rises uh, come to pass as ex- expected 
uh, he is convinced that uh, sufficiently uh, cooled skyscrapers using the natural environment can be produced in almost any climate. Uh, he and his team have worked on hybrid buildings in the harsh climates of being and beating and Chicago um, built with natural ventilation assisted by backup air conditioning which surprisingly perhaps can be switched off more than half the time on milder days and during the spring and autumn. Short hooks at how we might might reimagine the cities, offices and homes of the future. Maybe it's a time we changed our outlook. Questions 14 to 18, reading passage 2 has 9 sections A to I. Which section contains the following information? Write the correct letter A to I in boxes 14 to 18 on your answer sheet. Why some people avoid hospitals in the 19th century? F. A suggestion that the popularity of tall buildings is linked to prestige. C. A comparison between the circulation of air in the 19th century building and a modern standards. Section E. How short does the circulation of air in a 19th century building? Section D. An implication that advertising led to the large increase in the use of air conditioning. Section B. Ventilation in 19th century hospital wards. Professor Alan Short examined the work of John Shaw buildings who influenced the architectural designs of hospitals that went sure they had good ventilation. He calculated that pulsatins in the air coming from patients suffering from tuberculosis would not have harmed other patients. He also found that the air in wards in hospitals could change as often as in a modern operating theater. He suggests that energy use could be reduced by allocating more patients in communal areas. A major reason for improving ventilation in 19th century hospitals was the demand from the public for protection against bad air known as miasmas. These were blamed for the spread of disease for hundreds of years, including epidemics of cholera in London and Paris in the middle of the 19th century.